And good afternoon, everybody. This is Michael Filigara. I am with LogicalSignals.com and TradersHelpingTraders.com. And this is the Elliott Wave update for the S&P 500 for Wednesday, July 21st, 2021. The market continues to follow um, current analysis pretty cleanly. And I should start to put in some additional labeling. And as we left off yesterday, uh, I had put the intermediate rate four correction as complete at the 42.24 low with the market then launching higher within a intermediate wave five. And within that intermediate wave five, there are gonna be five waves of minor degree of which minor one and minor two are labeled as complete. And now we have the third wave, which is subdividing not once, but twice. And first we have one of three, two of three. And then we got today, which produced an additional one, two. So it's one of three, two of three, one of three of three, two of three of three. And now we're into that three of three of three type move. And this is, if you're a follower of Elliot, this is what it's all about. Because you're able to figure out what all these little squiggles and downsides, how they fit into the overall rally which is eventually gonna take us to new all time highs. Because this would seem like it was difficult. And actually when you were trading it today, it did give that appearance. That boy, is this, as for a three of three move, is this a difficult thing to pull out of this market? Even though the Dow was just plugging away and the, and the Russell was just plugging away, the NASDAQ sat and fought any upside, kept being sold off, and they buy it and sell it and buy it and sell it. And the same thing basically happened in the NASDAQ primarily because the largest tech stocks of the NASDAQ are also heavily weighted now within the S&P. But all things come to a conclusion and we got our move. And that is what this is all about. And so I continue <clears throat> to look for uh, additional upside. Now, where can this wave three complete? Well, I'm going to give a very uh, inconclusive but helpful hint by just putting Fibonacci retracements. Actually, that didn't work right. Let me try that again. Let me make sure I'm getting it right. I'm going to do Fibonacci retracements from wave one to wave three. And you can see, oops, this goes there. There you go. You can see the market has already exceeded 1.618 and 1.70. So it's up there. And the next stop would be 200%, where wave three is 200% of wave one, which fits beautifully, I have to tell you. Because wave threes are normally the longest and the strongest. Well, here we have the evidence of such. And don't forget that this third wave is probably maybe even extend past that. And the reason, because we're only in three of three. So when this completes a four and a five, then we still got of, of, of three of three, we still have a four and a five to complete the three. So this is ending up being the perfect blow up for the S&P because we still have a lot of uh, earnings reports to come out. We're just getting started. And, and today was a lot of the um, financial companies. We had Equifax, we had consumer credit, we had uh, some of the minor banks, and we still have the, the bigger banks. We still have Bank of America, we still have uh, uh, Goldman Sachs, et cetera. We've got a lot of people still yet to kind of come in here and tell us what they are or are not doing. So I am expecting additional climb. And as we've already put in via the Fibonacci extensions for the intermediate fifth wave, they're way up there. That would be the minimum for that, 4507. And we need to first get above 43, all right, I'll tell you actually, 4384. So, then we start breaking to new highs. What's going to be more important is the structure, but you can see now how the structure is really beginning to subdivide, which keeps this third wave alive. 
if anything, I may have to take back some and say minor one, minor two, minor three, minor four, one, two, three, four, five. We will let the market tell us, but right now I think it's an extension within that third wave. And that's what is building. So again, I'm gonna go with what the market tells me. It's not telling me it's getting ready to finish. It's not telling me that at all. They continue to push higher and we haven't even gotten the bigger companies to start to report yet. And if we have banks starting to report that they, they're basically putting in a little recovery because they didn't have to put as much in the write-off uh, financially for loans, you know, write down and write-offs as they had to uh, after COVID, well, things could be interpreted as, well, we are getting back to normal, therefore I'm gonna step in and I'm buying. And that's okay because we're looking for the blow off. But remember, what I still believe will come is that, that shock to the markets. What's gonna cause it? You can pick a reason, but it's gonna be a shock to the market, whether it's coming from the geopolitical situations around the globe, whether it's coming from internally in the, in the economy, whether it's coming from a sudden interest rate rise, whether it's coming from several of the tech companies reporting abysmal earnings, total disappointments. That's always a possibility, but it's gonna be a shock to the market. It's gonna be something that comes out of the blue and they were not expecting. And that would have to include me. It would be something that I wouldn't be expecting other than the, what's gonna happen. You know, a sudden drop, I am eventually expecting that. So how it gets there, I don't know. Anyway, for tomorrow, I'm going to continue to look for it. Next resistance is 4363-ish up in there. And then we move again if it doesn't complete. So I'd be looking for, let's see if I got the, the one of three, the two of three, one, two, three, four. This might be finishing three of three up here now. If it is, look for a small four-wave correction back down into this area. And then a fifth wave up to complete the third wave and then an additional four and an additional five. But those are gonna be on the minor level, not on the minute level, which is what we're counting right now. And actually within this three or three, it's sub minute levels. So if I can do this, I got one, I got two, I got three, possibly, and this is a little four, and now we get a five, all possible. Let's let the market tell us. Downside should continue to be held and be pretty limited. On an hourly basis, we're still not totally in alignment, although basically we are. We still need the 50 above the 200, and then it's off to the races, I think. At least on an hourly basis, we should get a stronger oomph even on our, our nearer term, uh, shorter term timeframes. And so I think that pullbacks are gonna be limited to moving averages. So first of all, we got the four, the eight, but those are gonna come into play on the way down. But anything of any sustenance, we likely be held in terms of a pullback by the hourly, hourly 20, the hourly 250. So, and, and if they start breaking through all of those on the hourly chart, then I'm going to be more concerned that we've already put tops in and what's going on. So shorter pullbacks, stronger upside. Next update, Thursday, the 22nd.